Historic Cherry Hill boasts a collection like no other historic house museum. Built in 1787 and lived in by five generations of the Van Rensselaer family, Cherry Hill became a museum in 1964 after the last member of the Van Rensselaer Rankin family died, at which point the entire contents of the house and the house itself became the museum collections. With 20,000 objects, 30,000 manuscripts, 7,500 textiles, 5,000 books, and 3,000 photographs, Cherry Hill's collection spans everything from the rare to the mundane. During the early museum years, staff and consulting scholars quickly realized that Cherry Hill was a veritable time capsule. One amazing discovery was made when an inventory was done of the contents of the attic. A trunk was opened and lo and behold, inside there were rare 18th century textiles. One of the textiles unearthed was a palampore, a mordant and resist dyed bed cover made in India's Coromandel coast for the Western market. My name is Deborah Evans Andrades. I first encountered this palampore shortly after arriving as curator at Historic Cherry Hill. Cherry Hill at that time was just wrapping up a major textiles project wherein the bulk of the textiles in the collection were being moved from the historic house to the new collections facility. And my response upon first seeing this was first of all amazement at how colorful and beautiful it is. But I also had a lot of questions about it because it is so unusual in its decoration. I wondered where did it come from? Who did it belong to, and what did it mean to that person? The historical backdrop of this palimpore spans several centuries and what was at that time the known world. A piece like this helps us to be a little less Eurocentric because it hints at trade relationships and cultural dialogue that predate the Dutch and English East India companies by centuries. Arab merchants had an age-old trade with both India and China and the Mughal Empire, which was an Islamic imperial power, controlled much of the Indian subcontinent during much of the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries. As a result, this piece has Indo-Persian as well as Chinese influences. The Chinese influence in this palimpsest is evident in the Shinwasari border surrounding the Tree of Life motif. The Tree of Life itself is probably of Persian origin, it seems to have first appeared in medieval Persian illuminated manuscripts. There is also European influence evident in this palimpsest. Around 1600, the Dutch and English East India companies were incorporated. Now they were interested not so much in painted textiles as they were in spices. Following Arab trading patterns, they acquired painted textiles in India where they were traded in the Spice Islands, where painted textiles were used for clothing. But although the Dutch and English were interested primarily in spices, when they encountered these painted textiles, they did get sidetracked. They were really intrigued by the superior colors and unusual designs. They commented on the curious, lively colors of the palimpsests and on the way that they were curiously flowered. One 17th century Dutch observer noted, these coverlets were made with flowers and branches and personages that is wonderful to see and so finely done with cunning workmanship that it cannot be mended or equaled throughout Europe. Once the Dutch got involved in this trade though, they did begin to influence the appearance of the palimpsests. Earlier palimpsests had a red background, which the Dutch traders felt would not appeal to Western taste. So they specifically required a white background. They also made further design suggestions regarding the tree of life motif and even sent design patterns that influenced the appearance of the palimpsest that you see here. But to whom did this palimpsest belong? Well, we're fairly certain that it descended in the Van Rensselaer family and it may have belonged to Philip Van Rensselaer born in 1747, who built Cherry Hill. If the palimpsest dates to the first half of the 18th century, as we suspect, it probably was purchased not by Philip Van Rensselaer, but by his father-in-law, Robert Sanders, 
who like Philip, was a wealthy, successful, and prominent Albany merchant. A luxury item, beautiful and exotic, this palimpsest would have been a symbol of wealth and worldliness. This palimpsest is very rare in that we're fairly certain that it descended in one Albany family from the 18th century. Most of the palimpsests in American collections were actually imported around the turn of the 20th century. If we can precisely date this palimpsest, it will certainly add to its research value. We've located a stamp on the back side of the textile which we hope will help us to date it more definitively. This palimpsor is emblematic of the many mysteries still present within the collections at Historic Cherry Hill. In 2009, Cherry Hill continues to be a place of wonder and discovery.